Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another Monday Motivation. This is the second to last Monday Motivation of the year. And what are we gonna be talking about today? We're gonna be talking about the Christmas blues. That's right, the holiday blues. Now, the thing is, um, pretty much the next couple days is gonna be Christmas vacation. Um, and by the way, I know there's a lot of religions out there. There's a lot of everything out there. Um, and this might be a little um, ill-timed. You know, maybe I should have released this Monday before last. But I think basically when the holiday blues really hit you is uh, basically when the holidays get here. That's it. And why do I know this? Is because, well, I, I have been, uh, in my past, I have been hit by the holiday blues. So that's why I can talk about it because look, right now, I'm sure there's plenty of you guys out there. I'm sure there's plenty of you guys that are saying to yourselves, man, look at this guy living in Mexico, beautiful girlfriend, amazing life, the best thing ever. And he's fucking telling me, you know, uh, not to have the holiday blues. And again, guys, you know, the reason I'm telling you this is because, or why I'm talking about this is because this is a real, real problem. I've been there. I've had the holiday blues. I've, um, you know, I've, I've been plenty of times where I, I just wanted the holidays to get through. I didn't, I didn't want any part of the holidays at all. And so, you know, this is, uh, this is why I want to bring this topic up a conversation. I want to, you know, talk about this because I think that this is something that affects a lot of people at, at one point or another in your life. Um, nothing's always 100% peachy and perfect. It's just not the truth. We all know that. And, um, you know, there's been plenty, like, for example, this Christmas, this, uh, this um, holiday season, I'm going to be hanging out with my girlfriend and her family, and we're going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. But last year, if you guys remember, you know, I, it was crickets, you know, literally, you know, there was nobody around. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have anyone to spend it with. It was just, um, you know, me and uh, you guys, basically. And again, it wasn't even you guys behind because literally during Christmas, you know, I remember last year that uh, I myself was literally by myself because, um, you know, everyone is either hiding or, sh or shying away from every from the from the Internet or from everyone or basically, you know, people are doing their family thing whether they want to or not. And that's why I'm bringing this up, too, because the whole thing that comes with um, the holiday blues, a lot of times it's not necessarily that you're home alone or you got no one to spend it with or you, you know, you got nothing to look forward to or anything like that. No, sometimes the holiday blues literally hit you while you're with your family, literally at the party where like everyone is around and and everyone is uh, talking to you about something that you don't want to talk about. And this is why I'm bringing this up, because, you know, it's all about, again, if you if you listen to. If you follow a lot of the creed and listen to a lot of the creed that I talk to you about when it comes to like the whole Monday motivation stuff, you know, when it comes about, you know, not giving a, not giving a fuck, not giving a crap about what anyone has to say, basically when you got to put that shit to your test, when you got to put this stuff to the ultimate test, all that stuff that I'm always telling you guys about is during the holidays. This is it. You know, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or what have you, you know, basically you know, that's when you got to really put all this stuff to the test because you know what? The thing is that, you know, it, it's very easy for us to, you know, do something that others, you know, say, oh, that you're going to fail at that. Oh, you suck at that. Oh, whatever. But you know why? Because we don't per personally know these people. So when you're doing your thing and, um, you know, there's others out there that are hating on you, you know, it, it, it's for some people, it's actually pretty easy to just brush that off. But what, you know, what really hits home, what really hits home and what really hits hard is when your family, when your friends, when your loved ones don't, not only do they not support you, but then, you know, they make it even more increasingly difficult for you. And so that's why, you know, during the holidays, it's such a rough time. I remember like 10, 15 years ago, I hated the holidays. I used to have to get drunk and high as fuck. I used to have to get like really, you know, really, really fucked up, you know, just to deal with my family. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, and so, and it was basically because they would ask me like, you know, what do you so uh, when uh, do you have a girlfriend or if I had a girlfriend so uh, when are you guys getting married or if I had a job how's the job going uh, you know what I mean but it was basically you know to like measure whether you know how good I was doing in comparison to to them or to others or to whatever and so that's why a lot of us you know for the most part dread uh, the holidays even if you are you know even if you had an amazing 2019 you know there's some families out there when you get you know when you finally uh 
you know, get to the holiday season, oh, they just can't wait to shit all over your parade and shit all over you. And so to me, you know, that's why, you know, a lot of holidays, you know, for like the last, fuck, I want to say six years plus, you know, I think maybe, I've, literally since I left Seattle, all my, all my holidays have been either by myself or with my friends. And the, I think the few times that I actually did visit family, I couldn't wait to get the fuck out of there. Because, you know, I love my family. Everything's great. We all gotta go visit. I miss home. You know, all that shit, but the reality is, is that, at least for me, like a lot of people, it's uh, every time you go back home, it's more of a headache than anything else. It's more of uh, you gotta explain yourself than anything else. It's more like a, uh, it, it's 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 uh, instead of being something that's uh, you know nice and relaxing, you know something where you can take some time off and enjoy, you know the family, enjoy the holidays. You know, for a lot of people, the holidays is, is extremely stressful, and it and literally comes down to the fact that. The stress comes from dealing with your family. And again, it's just explaining yourself to them. And, um, you know, that, that you know, can become overwhelming to a lot of people. That, be, that becomes very, you know, um, you know, again, something very, very hard to deal with a lot of people, even myself. You know, so that's why I personally, I don't, I don't care about necessarily like, uh, you know, being with people that don't, that are just not going to make my life better. You know, they're either... You know, I'm not interested in being in a, in a situation, you know, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's anything like that in which it's going to be, you know, a shitty situation for myself or a crappy situation for myself. So that's why I just basically avoid that all, all you know, altogether. And I've never been happier because I, I really don't, you know, just like the same thing I tell you guys, you know, we don't have anything to prove to anybody except for yourself. And, um, you know, once you, you know, again, once you realize that, once you become more self-aware, you know, once you realize what's really important to you and um, you realize that what's important to you is not what's important to them. And um, and then, you know, the other part is that, you know, you got to tell your own family members or your own people that, you know, the same, the, pe the people that love you, you got to tell them to go fuck off sometimes because, you know, as much as Aunt Mary or cousin Becky or you know uncle johnny all care about you they really don't you know what i mean like they don't they just care about you know um them and it sounds harsh and fucked up but the reality is is that you know you know i don't want to get too deep with the whole psychological thing but basically it's always about projection you know when somebody is telling you Oh man, you know, you shouldn't follow your dream to do XYZ. You should follow this more, you know, steady, you know, job opportunity or this career or this uh, schooling because this is what's going to, you know, make your life better, complete or whole. And again, they're projecting because that's what they got out of their life. And then they see you trying to chase your dream and then they never had the balls to do it. So then they fucking tell you, hey, listen, I, I never had the balls to do it, but you know what? I know you do, but I'm gonna take those balls away from you because you know you shouldn't do it for, for this why you know all these reasons. And it's always like a variation of that, you know, whether it's um your own parents or loved ones that are you know again again a lot of times they're doing it for their own selfish reasons that they love you so much and they care for you so much that they don't want to see you hurt, they don't want to see you fail, they don't want to see you any of these things, you know. And so whatever the reason is, whether it's malicious or not. It's um, and in a lot of situations when we're dealing with our family, it's basically what it is. It's it's a very unhealthy. It really is very unhealthy. And it wasn't you know it wasn't until like I, I started to realize that and I separated myself and I separated from myself from all that that hate, all that um, animosity, all that jealousy, all that everything that I started to all of a sudden you know blossom as a human being. And every time that I would have any kind of real major hiccup. Again, even what happened to me in Texas, I don't want to get too fucking deep into it, but basically, you know how everything happened, for, for any of you guys that know about that, it, it, it's going to come up in a story time eventually, but even though I've talked about it many times, but you know, even after what happened to me in Texas, that whole life-changing event in which I literally had to, I lost everything and start from all over, basically another, you know, the main reason why I'm out here in Mexico, um, you know, all that really deep down, deep down, deep, 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 deep down inside, basically just stemmed down because I was still looking for the approval and the love of my own family. And um, that's one of the things that I, the hard lessons that I learned 
or I got from that whole experience. There was a lot of things that I learned, but that was one of the major ones there. The fact that, you know, again, we all know this, you know, you like, uh, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. That whole thing, you know, where, you know, I, I, I just finally realized that I'm never gonna get the kind of love or the kind of, uh, you know, what I need from them. I'm just never, I was, that was never gonna happen. I'm never gonna get that. That's what made me real, what I'm, what I'm realized after that. And then not only did I realize that, you know, after the whole life-changing, traumatizing event that my family was not only never there for me, but they're never gonna be there for me. It doesn't mean I don't love them, but the reality is, is that because of that event, I realized, you know, who was my real family? Who were the ones that cared for me? Because they're the ones that stepped up for the, to the plate. And um, just like I stepped up to the plate for many people, you know, again, sometimes they don't step up to the plate for you. You know, again, I stepped up for the plate for everybody. It's what I do. Um, anyone that knows me, especially if you know me personally, you know that's what I do, all right? Um, so, I mean, for reals, you know? Um, but the thing is, it's like very disappointing when, uh, you know, you your own family is uh, not there for you. And there's nothing you can really do about it because it's like your family type of shit. If you get mad at them, you're the fucking bad guy. And that whole thing. And um, when I realized that um, that my actual friends, these people that I met, you know, that I, they, they only know me because of me and they have no actual real like uh, family ties or blood ties or anything like that to me, how they treated me seven billion times better than my own family. You know, that, and it would all happen like, like that, that was what, one of the main things that made me realize, you know, pretty much what I'm telling you right now, you know, what kind of snapped me out of that blues forever, you know, meaning that, you know, I love my family, you know, I really do, I love all my cousins, I love everyone out there, but I can't say the same for them, you know, I can't ever, I cannot say the same for them for me, you know, meaning that they might show, they might say that they do, but the one thing is, you know, one thing is uh, action and another thing is words. and. Uh, we already know I'm a, I'm a guy about I'm an action guy I'm not a words kind of guy <laughs> I know right it's coming to <laughs> all, all, all I do is talk right but but you guys know what's up you know what I mean I put my I put my fucking money where my mouth is all the fucking time and um, I don't make any bones about it it's not just walking the walk it's it's not just talking to talk it's walking the walk and unfortunately a lot of my family you know again it runs in the blood now they talk a lot but they when the time when it comes to when it comes to walking they don't, and um, that kind of sucks, you know, but... Uh-oh. Alarm there. Yeah, sorry, just waiting for that alarm to turn off. Um, but yeah, you know, again, I'm not trying to harp too much on my own family. I'm not trying to fucking, you know, put throw them under the bus or anything like that. Like I said, I love every one of them. And I'm not talking about every one of my family. You know, that it doesn't even need to be said, all right? If my, any one of my family is watching this, you know who you are. Meaning, you know who stepped up to the plate and who hasn't stepped to the plate. And again, it's not about handouts. It's not about anything. We all know that. It's just sometimes all you need is a little love, a little bit of moral support, and that's it. And again, you know, just to come full circle when it comes to, like, the holidays. You know, if you're lucky enough out there to be in a situation where you look forward to hanging out with your family and your friends and you're never going to fucking suffer, you know, this blues, this uh, Christmas blues, you know, you're, you're okay. You're good. Again, this still will happen. You know what I mean? Every once in a while, even if you have a perfect situation, you know, shit will happen. You might get the blues because you're on your way to go vi visit family and then like that movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, you just get stuck in traffic or get stuck and you don't make it home for the holidays. But, you know, that might be how the blues might strike you. But the, but the end of the day, for the most part, you know, we're going to fucking... We, we, we would be liars if we fucking said that, that we don't have any family drama. No matter how perfect, no matter how shitty, no matter what, there's always something wrong. You know what I mean? There's always something with that. And a lot of times it basically has nothing to do with your own family, but just you and how you handle these situations. So, you know, to me, why doesn't my, uh, the holidays or the, or my own family. Yeah, sorry. A lot of noise. Why? So again, you know, back to me, it's like, why doesn't my, my family, why doesn't the holidays, what, why don't any of these things affect me in a negative way? Well, basically because I've learned from my mistakes. I've not, I've learned to not allow these things to, to you know, um, affect me anymore. And, you know, unfortunately it took a lot of, uh, it took, it took situations in my life to transpire for me to realize this. 
But at the end of the day, I've realized that, you know, there's plenty of people out there that um, they never realize this. And a lot of people out there that, you know, will be dealing with, um, you know, the family Christmas blues for their whole fucking life. Because again, you know, that blues can come at you in many different ways. It could be literally because you got nobody, you're all alone, you're just sitting there, you know, listening to, to me. But again, you know, for, for a lot of you guys out there, you know that sometimes you, you could be surrounded by a hundred people and feel even more alone than if you were actually alone. That's another thing I learned, you know, from a lot of these things. So again, why I make these videos? Because, you know, sometimes a good majority of these uh, stories or videos, they, they just come from, you know, basically mistakes I've made in my own life. They come from, uh, you know, situations I have in my own life. Hold on. Yeah, sorry, again, uh, <laughs> a lot of noise. Yeah, this video has been a little difficult to deal with, just like my, just like the family, boom, boom. But uh, yeah, again, there was like the, a business that was a blaring music. Uh, I just didn't want it to, anyway, sorry. So like I was saying, you know, guys, basically what it boils down to is the fact that like, um, it's always up to you. It really is always up to you. If you are, if you are suffering from the holiday blues, the Christmas blues, a lot of it can actually be avoided. Literally, it can be avoided because I remember even when I would spend, uh, you know, like for example, even last year where I was completely alone, I had nobody, you know, not, not my friends, not my family, not anybody because everybody was busy doing their own thing and that's all good. But it was uh, basically what, uh, what I realized, you know, was that I was in such a good place I was in such a really awesome, happy place, you know, in my mind, in my life, in my everything that, you know, basically last Christmas was pretty freaking awesome. In fact, if you guys remember, let's get a little specific. If you guys remember, you see the balcony up there because we're home guys, by the way, we're already here. Um, but you see my balcony up there? I actually got stuck up there and I got a whole story to, you know, to tell you guys about that in case you guys have never heard that story, but literally, literally, on Christmas, not only was I alone, but I got stuck up there. I had to break through the glass. I fucking cut myself. Hold on. I cut myself extremely deep. I had to get like eight stitches. And yet, you know, it wasn't horrible. I mean, sure, it was scary to, you know, not only get stuck up there on a Sunday during Christmas, but having nobody to contact because it was Christmas and then having to break through into my own house and then figure out how to get to a hospital. So to me, it was kind of shitty for like the first little bit, you know, the whole ordeal of dealing with that. But in retrospect, I'll never forget that night. I'll never forget that Christmas. It was my first Christmas here. And in a weird sense, it was awesome. You know what I mean? It really was. And, uh, and it was, it, it was amazing. You know what I mean? It was, I'm not even gonna lie to you. And I have not only such an amazing memory, but I, I literally overcame the biggest disaster that could have possibly hit me. And uh, yeah, you know what I mean? And again, you know, not only do I have an amazing story about that, but it's, it's, it's something that I can literally pat myself on the back for, meaning that, yeah, man, you know, like I survived probably, you know, my worst case scenario. And not only did I survive it, I survived it with an amazing story, a huge smile on my face. And I came out the next year, which is 2019, man, really fucking kicking ass and taking names. And here I am, you know, now this Christmas, it's gonna be probably one of my best Christmases and God, I can't even remember when. And we're gonna start off the next year amazing and balls. but you know, don't think that I don't remember all those shitty Christmases, all those shitty holidays, all those shitty times in which not only did I have nothing, but nothing to look forward to. But in the end, you know, if you stay positive and you know where you're going, you know who you are and you know what's up, then guess what guys? you're gonna end up in a really awesome place. It's just, you gotta know that everything, it not only is it gonna be okay, but that you gotta fucking work hard to get there. And that's it, and you'll get there. You know, again, now, I don't give a crap what, you know, what the consensus is. I know I'm the envy of my own family. I'm, not, I'm the envy of a lot of people. And to me, I'm just living my life. I'm not doing anything special. All I'm doing is basically not listening to them and listening to me. So with that being said, start listening to yourself, guys, all right? And uh, don't worry about it. You'll get over these blues, all right? And, uh, you know, there's, you know, if worst case scenario, if it's a little too bluesy, smoke an extra blunt, have an extra drink, and just, you know, make sure, you know, you get that smile on your face and fucking deal with it, all right? Like a fucking boss, like a champ, like a adult. All right, guys, love you. 
I hope you guys have an amazing holidays. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, an amazing week, an amazing everything. Um, I got some special episodes coming up for Christmas, and uh, you already know what's up. You'll see me back here Thursday, um, and that's it. We're all, we're finishing up the year. We got one more Monday motivation left for this year. All right, and um, yeah, whatever. I'm, I was gonna tell you. I was gonna you know spill some beans there. I was gonna do a little. Um, What's the word I was looking for? Spoiler, but I'm not going to spoil what's coming up. I got some special stuff coming up, and you guys will see in the next days coming up. All right. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. But more important than anything else, stay awesome. Love you, and peace out. And stay safe out there during the holidays. The biggest reason people are unhappy right now is because they value somebody else's opinion more than they value their own. Have the conversation with the person that's holding you back. The reason most people who are listening right now are not doing that thing is they're worried about the opinion of somebody. somebody, somebody, somebody. I am so devastated that you actually let your grandma's point of view, your mom, your dad, your sister, your aunt, you still let somebody else dictate based on their opinion every action you do and it's your life. The reason I'm super happy is nobody can tell me nothing. My wife, mom, and daughter could walk into my room right now, tell me I'm a piece of crap, and I would be 100% unfazed. That is some gangster emotional structure. If you're not feeling it, find new friends. I'm being dead serious about this. This one is real big for me. The only way I've seen, now that I'm older, that you can build confidence is if you surround yourself with people that are optimistic. Start trimming your friend group and start adding to your friend group predicated on what you wanna be. Like it's unbelievable what happened to me when I got into the Silicon Valley world and started meeting like Mark Zuckerberg and like Ev Williams and Sock and like Travis, like it changed my life. Everybody in this room needs to cut out as much of the noise and time with people that are negative and spend as much time with people that are positive. The people you spend time with are the ones that dictate your mindset. You can limit your time with your mom. You can limit your time with your best friend. You could tell your girlfriend or husband to go fuck themselves. You fucking roll up on your dad, your mom, your sister and say fuck you, I'm out. Because you're fucking toxic, I'll see you in six years if you figure out why the fuck I left. You're accepting to be in that relationship. If you feel motivated by this conversation or you're intrigued by it, add one new winner friend. Like, you know what I mean? Add one new winner friend and cut one loser friend. I feel like even when I give it away and I don't speak to them, the chatter of them talk like that means you that, like that, 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 that means you value their opinion. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Please let this be the video that drills through your head that your life is predicated on when you get real quiet and you can't hear another fucking person's two cents that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with where they are in life. Are you really gonna let those eight or nine people dictate your life? Because you are so fearful of judgment from others that at the end of the day, when you're 87, you will not give a fuck about. Hey guys, me and Lambo are still here. Show's not over. Just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder to please check out the online store where you can find all kinds of awesome merch. Also, Check out joseatiaga.com where, you know, it's the website for me and all this other stuff. Also, you know, check out Discord. It's an online community in which everyone, all my fans, hang out. Again, just, you know, look at the, click at the link in the bottom description of every video here um, where you can just join the community and join and continue the conversation where we talk about, you know, all this and beyond. So please, don't forget to check us out there. Check me out on Instagram, check me out on Twitter, check me out everywhere. In fact, always look at the description of every video. You can find all kinds of stuff at the bottom of the description of every video. Again, I'm always giving you all kinds of goodness. So, you know, whether you're checking the description of the video or whether you're watching the next video, which you're gonna see some here now, you're gonna have all kinds of fun. So again, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys when you.